Hey everybody, it's Triple J, and welcome back to another episode of Bountiful Bayou here in City Skylines. And today, we are going to continue expanding the city. Expanding out. Last time we got some basic road structures in, just kind of guiding us to where we're thinking, I guess where we're thinking of going in the future. And where we might kind of break up the city here, or break up this, this, uh neighborhood rather i think we'll be doing more housing out in the corner here but potentially a little less gridded and a little bit more i don't know sort of flowing suburban and we gotta get some milestones done we gotta get some more milestones going we need 3800 population to get to the next milestone which is big town i'm sorry to unlock busy town we need 3800 so uh i think we need to get there so we hit this avenue last time, and as far as going this way, I'm not real sure about how to do that just yet or, or where we want to go. And if, we're, if I'm not completely certain of where we want to go, then that's something that I want to just to sit on and wait. Don't ever rush anything. It's not worth it. Just kind of let it let your creative juices flow as they come. So I think as far as this road goes, let's continue out straight for a second now i don't want to get too close to this highway because again i think i want to redo some of this some of these curves it's just a little you can kind of see we have some weird kinks in this road and i'd like to fix that i don't mind how this is flowing but i i do want to i do want to fix a little bit of that so let's not get too close to the edge of this let's continue to bring the four lane through to hmm. I think actually what I'm gonna do is have this go straight to here and then I'm gonna have it break oh, I don't have access to that road yet do I there's the avenue with grass where is that right here the uh, no that's the four lane it's this one large avenue with grass it's not the four lane version. It is a two lane version. And I like to use these in areas where we're sort of doing like a little development, I guess, sort of a suburban development of housing. I really like to use this road, not the four lane, but the two lane one. But we don't have access to that yet. We'll actually get it uh, when we hit busy town. So we just need to hit that and then we can use that road. But what I'm thinking is that right here, we get a little bit of a split. So I'm going to bring the industry road down because I think we'll put some industrial buildings right down here. Just as a little, just a tiny industrial pocket, tiny, tiny. And then this road, let's see, let's have this curve to about there okay and then this will curve off of here and maybe connect up to this not real sure yet we might end up doing this as like a perfect kind of curve with this road as it brings through but then i'm going to have another segment just crossing here and this will be like our dividing line for this so these areas i think will be sprinkled with some housing but not exactly on the avenue here so I'm going to bring this in to there, go up. And now nah, I don't really want the houses directly behind this. So perhaps we just leave that open. I will do this, however. And down here, I think it's uh, fine to bring these out, do another city block right here. Um. Again, might leave that open. Now, I know that we're trying to work for population, but at the same time, I don't want to... Because what, what can happen very early on, and we've kind of talked about this, is you're, you're trying... You know, we're obviously trying to get our milestones going, and that's all driven by population, right? But what you don't want to do is... Because what ends up happening is sometimes you build... You start your city, and you're expanding your population, and you're, you're getting all the things down... 
But what you do is you kind of cram it all in because you feel very claustrophobic, right? You only have one or two tiles to, to work with. You start to sort of really focus narrowly on the main starting area and you just pack everyone in uh, just to hit those milestones. And the risk that you run of that is later on when you start expanding, you start maybe building some things that because you're going to have a little bit more money later on. So then you're starting to build a little bit more elaborate things. You're going to starting to get more ideas because you're getting in the groove of things. And what ends up happening is you start looking back at your first area and now you don't really like it because it looks so different from everything else. Everything is kind of gridded and packed in and you're like, uh, this neighborhood, I don't know. And then that's kind of where you end up wanting to start over. Uh, because such a massive area that you sort of just threw down to hit some of your milestones start to look not as nice to you. And so I would challenge you to, when starting out, just slow it down and start to think about the future of the city and start to think about where, um, you know, not pack it all in, right? You shift over to a different area, maybe build another little inlet because we can still buy, we can buy another tile right now. We have plenty of space to work with at this point and so you know we could start building uh, our downtown area if we wanted to now we don't have a lot of money right now but we're making a decent amount per week um you know we're going to be getting more population down but you know you can buy another tile we could do some sort of like a, a lake town or a you know an ocean side village over here and that would increase our population things like that so just never feel like you have to rush it and pack everything in because then you're just going to end up maybe not liking it as much later on. So let's actually, hmm, we could buy a tile. How much is this going to cost us? 5,000. Okay. Hmm. I'm not actually sure which direction we would like to move at this point. The frustrating thing about buying this tile is you don't really have access to this riverfront. You don't have the entirety of this one or this one. If you buy it, you need almost the three around it. Uh, I guess we could start buying this one. I'm considering this just because it does have the interchange here that we may want to mess with a bit. I like this island one. This, this will be a really nice thing to build on. We're gonna have to figure out what we put on here. Maybe some sort of nature park or, I don't know, amusement park or zoo or something. But in terms of getting our population going, I think it's probably a safe bet to move north at this point because we have the hillsides down here and these hills will make for some really interesting things later on. But as far as trying to get more population in and trying to hit our milestones, it's probably going to, we're probably going to want to move north. Um, even though we're not even close to being over here yet, let's buy this one. 5,400. That's, that's totally fine. Now, again, we are kind of butting up against this, this Southern line here, but uh, we, we have some time. We have some time. And I think moving North is going to be a good play. We also have this massive swath of land here, which I could see as just more, you know, maybe another little, little township, more gridded suburbs, things like that. But yeah, this, what this will do is force us to make some more decisions on where this highway goes. And again, I think it's just going to go straight. Uh, we might curve around and connect up here, but if this is going to be maybe a downtown area all along this like lakefront or I get, yeah, I guess this is a, well, river, lake, I don't know. We're kind of smattered in the ocean here, so I don't know. I'm not really sure what's a, what's a river and what's a lake or what's the ocean at this point, but, um, but yeah, we'll have this whole front. This will sort of be, you know, our dividing line. And then, you know, we might have it just come straight through so it can split off onto either side and dump people, you know, maybe around this lake side and then dump people around into like the main city center. Um, so let's actually make some of those decisions. So what I've actually been doing uh, over on Twitch on our streams, what I've been doing lately and this is something that I've never done before, but it's been really, really handy, is starting to almost use the game, almost use the painting the districts as like a notepad in the game. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of show you. So I'm thinking this, this specific area, let me make this a little bit bigger. 
this specific area along the lakefront. Maybe even over to here a little bit. And this, I can see being our commercial downtown. It's sort of using the game as notepad, right? So lakefront properties, we can't go around that. That's fine though. Lakefront, um, lakefront, like, I don't know, residential. Now, of course we have it in our head, but sometimes, you know, you're going to step away from the game for maybe a couple days or a few days or a week. And you might kind of forget where you were thinking. Uh, it often, it happens a lot, actually, to me where I'm going, you know, what were you thinking over there? Oh, yeah, this is where I was thinking of putting this because and you can always change it later. Obviously, it doesn't cost anything to put a district down, but it's just nice to sort of give yourself a little bit of an idea uh, as to where you might want to put those. So you can kind of put a pin in it for later. I've kind of been doing that and that's that's worked out really well for me. So I don't know. Maybe a little tip that might help you out in your in your uh, cities. Coast to coast radio with Tony but okay, again, we're getting too far ahead of ourselves. So I'm going to put another road through there. Just get a little bit more housing. Now, that doesn't match up with that. And that might bother some of you. Uh, but again, we're not going to be building through here. And sometimes roads just don't line up. And to me, that's fine. Um, here, I think, actually, let's go... Yeah, I'm going to be okay with that. That's a little close to the highway, but we might not zone right there. So I think that's fine. And I'm going to bring this up. Cool. And I could go through here, but I don't think I will. Hmm, what is this little... This little weird... Interesting. Huh, I don't remember that being there last time. Yeah, we can start zoning in more more housing right here. I think I'm going to leave that open as well. Now let's check pipes. We're generally good. That through. Pipes, how are we doing on power? 55. Okay. We're going to need some more soon-ish. When do we start unlocking... Uh, green power like solar plants or our updraft towers six thousand okay we can we can make it until then because we still we can pop down a couple more of these advanced wind turbines in fact while we have some cash i'm just gonna put another one of those down just to give ourselves a little jump in power great now as far as services go yeah, we only have the one, well, the two clinics, but we only have the one over here. So we're going to need another one, perhaps in this little area. We'll give some happy faces. We do have death care sort of covered, but again, we can't unlock the crematorium until 13,000 population. So we do want to get building before this kind of starts to fill up, because what you don't want to be doing is spamming down a bunch of cemeteries because you're going to have to empty all of those at some point. Um, that is a finite resource right there. So we're at nine. We're still okay for now, but we're going to want to probably hit that milestone before we uh, are running into some serious death waves and having to empty them and things like that. Same with your... Um, now, we didn't put any down, but same with your garbage dumps. It's a very, very similar kind of a thing, right? That's going to fill up and then you're going to either have to Spend the money to put down the recycling plants or pay for the incinerators. But the incinerators you don't get until 17. Uh, oh, they changed this. I don't believe. Now, I guess I could be wrong. But the, uh, my initial shock was that this is now unlocked at 6,000. I could have swore that this was unlocked at like 17,000 or maybe even like 24,000. Now it, it, it varies depending on your buildable area. Um, so if your map has larger buildable area, the milestones are a little bit harder to reach. They're higher in population, but if you have less buildable area, meaning more water, then they will often lower those population requirements. But 6,000, huh? 
I don't know. In my head, that was always higher. But uh, okay, that's not too shabby, actually. Okay, so we have some medical down. We're going to, yeah, definitely going to need some more fire coverage. And I think I might put that. I'm just going to put that right next door. And then we need police. And that can just go right here as well. Actually, I'll put this on. The, we'll just have like corners of our services. Great. So now these guys are getting ready to go. How are we doing on education? We have our one school, one elementary school, but we're running out of cash now. Now we have a massive demand for residential. So maybe we just pop some down. And then once we get a little bit more cash, we'll put down some of the, uh, the school. In fact, over here, I might not even zone on the outside of this road. Might just leave it on the inside. I don't know. But for right here, I'm going to go to... I'm going to zone that bit. And that bit. And these. I'm going to put a little strip of commercial right there no actually I'm not just kidding I'm gonna do that though right along here and a little bits there yeah I don't want that there I, I think I'm gonna actually make this sort of like a green space with this and I think I will end up keeping this cemetery here uh, probably just having to load it and unload it. But what I might end up doing is putting a crematorium right next to it. So that it can, uh, you know, when it does need to be unloaded, it can be, do that pretty quickly. And then it's going to need parks over here as well. Those are fairly inexpensive. Let's get actually a large playground. I could actually put a large playground right here. Now, of course, we don't want the kids running off into the highway, but I think eventually we'll put barriers here. The sound barrier. I don't know if we can do that right now. No. We don't unlock the highways with sound barriers until our next milestone. But yeah, the nice thing about these is you can extend this dirt path out. So we can kind of make this almost like a little bit of a green area where people don't live. There we go. Yeah, we can do something with that in the future. I mean, even, we could even like make a fence around this or just have natural like tree wall around it. And I think that would be good. Yeah, we are going to need another elementary school, even though we are not packing our current elementary school. Uh, we are pretty far from this one, so it'd be nice to get some, just some generic happiness over here with having a school nearby. And maybe that school sits, hmm. kind of, you know, where, where can I get, it's it really the, the, the green, right, the efficiency quote around it. It's not very high. It's just not very large. Is it higher with the community school? Um, maybe a little bit. Mm. Yeah, actually it, it is. Even though they're the same price? Oh, this is student... No, no, no. They're, this, it's actually more expensive. But this community school... Is higher upkeep, less capacity of students. Hmm. It is more expensive, but it does have a wider, I don't know, coverage. That might be something to put, well, it might actually be something to put over here. We could tuck it right in here, across the street from the playground. Seems to make sense to me. 
most of these people are, are already educated as of right now anyway yeah that that'll start to fill up and it's really nice these are the schools that come with the green cities dlc it's like just another another nice asset and alternative uh i don't really know exactly what makes this green maybe you know besides like the solar panels and the um but as far as like the education concerns i i don't think there's a necessarily anything more green about teaching students than the other one and the only other high school as well which uh, the institute of creative arts is the green cities version of the high school so this is 800 students whereas this is not so many university uh a thousand yeah so 200 less which is considerable and it's probably more expensive per week yeah but again it probably has a larger uh probably has a larger radius of happiness which is very inv invaluable and important so budget is looking healthy more people are wanting to move in um you know i think i am going to do hmm. i think i will do another grouping of people through here and I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that open just in case I want to put like another park or you know just like a pathway through or something I don't know yet but just get some more some more folks in here but yeah we're, we're starting to you know we're going to put a little bit more in the suburbs but that's not going to be very many people so we are going to need to start kind of you know maybe pushing in this direction or even shifting up people toward this coastline okay so the high school let's take a look at that radius we actually do have a high school right there so these people aren't very much affected, but it's kind of centralized. Uh, and we only have 526 people eligible at the time. Now we just put down a bunch of people, so that's going to change. In fact, it'll probably double. But, hmm. We kind of, yeah, we really put this centralized. It might actually be worth moving it to maybe over here and then having another one right here. And I think that's probably the play. So. Hmm. Yeah, what if I took it off? Uh, what if I got rid of that? I put it right there. And I'm going to keep that basketball court there. I'm just going to add another basketball court to the other side right there and what i might do is put the i don't think i have access to that just yet but uh yeah the the sports hall and gymnasium it's a really nice asset oh i do have access to it it's just uh very expensive one hundred twenty thousand. but what we also could put down by the elementary school is this child health center and this is something that came in the uh in the free update with Sunset Harbor. And what this does is it acts as, you can see this huge radius. So this acts as a additional health coverage for children and teens, and um, just gives them, you know, just a bit of a health boost, which is really, really nice. So we can put that down. Hmm. Maybe that could go across from the cemetery I don't, I don't know maybe i mean i there are like you know where where i live and if you if you go out into like smaller towns even you know where i grew up rather and you're driving sort of out of town or you're just kind of passing through some neighborhoods heading out of town there's usually cemeteries there's there is usually like child care centers or 
you know, nursing homes, things like that, kind of all, all stacked on top of each other like that. So maybe there's a child health center right across the street from the school. And we do have access to fences. So what if I just fenced this in? You know, just doing a little decorating. Just to give them, you know, because I know that they're hedged in already, but it's just sort of another fence to sort of create uh, a barrier. And then we can just... Plop down some trees. And maybe make this a little bit more natural over here. Just to sort of separate uh, separate that up. And I can just kind of go to there. Some bushes. Got some trees, but yeah. I think that works. And that'll help boost the health of this area. That's always a good thing. But yeah, so now we have the high school over there. Uh, how much is the high school? 30,000. Okay. We should get there pretty quickly. But yeah, so then we'll we'll this will sort of cover this area a little bit better, and then we can and then we can have another one that sort of sits. It's quite big, but it will fit right there. Again, we're across the street from the cemetery, so maybe that's something that sits right here. Yeah, I think that could work. Perfect. There we go. A lot of green. Now, that's going to be too much for right now, but eventually these, these people, the kids who are moving in right here, are going to need to go to high school. And I think it looks really nice actually coming up over this bridge, too. Very good. And I think I'm going to put another basketball court down because it should fit really nice there. Cool. Excellent. Making our citizens happy, which means more people want to move in. Now, how close are we, though? We're getting 3,600. We're almost to that 3,800. We're very, very close. I could be willing to do a little bit of that there. I don't know about the inside yet. I'm going to hold off. I can always zone later, you know? That is always a possibility. And I guess along here, this is getting really tight to the highway. Uh, eh, yeah, I don't know. But let, we can do this inside part. And even the outside part there. And yeah, still like this is enough industrial right now. We have no industrial demand. I mean, it's it's peaking out a little bit, but nothing substantial. And we do have quite a bit of population. So, you know, when you are putting down your first parts of residential or uh, industrial <laughs> in industrial, uh, when you're putting down your first parts of industrial zoning, make sure that you don't put too much. Just do a little bit at a time, kind of see how it balances out your RCI demand. Because um, I think sometimes that when that orange bar gets really high, it, it gets a little scary and you're like, okay, I got to spam down a bunch. Uh, don't spam down a bunch. Spam down a little bit because sometimes it will start to even out more quickly than you expect. Um, and you can sometimes overzone that. And then what happens is you're going to see them all screaming that they don't have enough workers. Uh and yeah, so just do just small blocks at a time and see how it balances. Trial and error is is your best bet there. Uh, I also might go there even. Yeah, I think that's fine. But again, I'm going to leave this open just for a little bit of a park. Because I think that will be, that'll be good. We'll put some paths through here and just kind of make this a little bit of a green space inside of, uh, you know, all this residential. Yeah, 
there we go. There we go. Right at the end of the video. Perfect timing. We hit busy town. So we get some more city planning policies. Or actually, we have access to city planning policies. Uh, some leisure level four to do, do tourism specialization. A bunch of new policies. Now we get new roads. Now we'll have access to our large avenue with grass that we want to make this little suburb with. Highway lanes. So now we get decorative roads, which is nice. Just creates more happiness. Trolley roads. Police headquarters. So the upgraded version of uh, police station or the larger version of the police station, fire station, and uh, hospital. Great. Skate parks, more parks, lots of really good things. Excellent. These are all with the modern Japan creator pack that recently came out with Sunset Harbor. But uh, there we go. Excellent. Well, everyone, I think on that note, that is going to do it for this episode of Bountiful Bayou here in City Skylines. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. We'll probably push to our next milestone, but I believe it's a little higher next time. So what we might do is start to expand out to here and maybe start to get some design going with our downtown. I'm not sure yet, but I want to I want to finish this this kind of area up and see see where we land but uh we might be doing some infrastructure work next time trying to trying to move across the river here so everybody thank you again and we'll see you next time